Okay, we're ready to go. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. My name is Dennis Normile, and I'll be the MC this afternoon. Before we get started, I hope you will join me in the usual routine of making sure that your cell phones are either turned off or on manner mode. Our guest this afternoon is a pioneer in the, in the field of regenerative medicine. Uh, I think probably everybody here saw the headlines earlier this year when uh, the first patient to receive uh, retinal pigment epithelial cells derived from induced pluripotent cells were implanted into uh, the first patient. Uh, our guest wanted me to emphasize that um, although this was it got a lot of attention for being the first use of IPS cells, she wants to be known as a pioneer of uh, retinal cell therapy. She started work in this area uh, long before IPS cells even existed. Uh, she originally worked with uh, uh, embryonic stem cells. It switched to IPS cells uh, even before they had been announced by uh, their discoverer, uh, Shinya Yamanaka. She has built on Yamanaka's work. Uh, she and her team learned how to turn IPS cells into RPE cells and how to culture them so that they could be implanted into a human eye. The first patient has received the uh, transplant of tissue and the early indications are that uh, it has gone well. We're still waiting for, uh, for further patients who will be participating in these trials and she will be bringing us up to date on the status of her research program and where it goes from here. So please join me in welcoming uh, Masayo Takahashi. Thank you. I do. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be here today, and because I, I, already I I could talk to Dennis my secret that I'm the person who started the retinal cell therapy, not only just using the iPS cells. And uh, today I will talk about the uh, iPS cell uh, for f the first application of the iPS cell to the human. And I have only 30 minutes, so uh, let me start about the eyeball structure, which it, I love very much. Eyeball is very beautiful, and it's a tremendous, like a universe. We have everything, vessels, neurons, and immunologies, and everything. So let me introduce. So the eyeball has the very transparent tissue here, and the light goes through the cornea to, into the eyeball, and the uh, retina perceives the light. Uh, retina is uh, come from the brain. It's not the, um, connected to the brain, but retina itself is uh, uh, extending, uh, extending part of the brain. So it's a central nervous system. So if we have the uh, 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 damage in the cornea or lens, we can replace it as a transplant tissue. But once the retina is damaged, we cannot fix them because it's a central nervous system. But recently, the only, um, even the central nervous system can be fixed by the uh, uh, various stem cells. 
And we are using, actually I, I was using neuro stem cells and researching ES cells and moved to the iPS cells. And the, in the ret retina, uh, the central part of the retina is called macula. And we can only see clearly in this area, very, this very small area, like five millimeter diameter. And outside of this area, we cannot see clearly. So if this macular part is destroyed, we cannot see uh, more than 2200, even though we wear grasses. So it's a very important part. And in the retina, very thin part, but there are three layers here. And first, the uh, photoreceptor, these weird shaped cells, neurons. Uh, photoreceptor cells perceive the lights, and the signals goes to the secondary neurons and tertiary neurons, and go through the optic nerve to the brain. And today's main cast is the retinal pigment epithelial cells. That is the monolayer cell here, brown cells, and maintain the this important photoreceptor cells. So the, uh, if the RPE is damaged, photoreceptor will die afterwards. And the target disease is age-related macular degeneration. And the, uh, in this disease, the retinal pigment epithelial cells, RPE, is the uh, main cause. The cause of this disease is is senescence, elderness of the RPE cells. And then the mild inflammation occurs by the senescence and the uh, neovascularization, um, very leaky vessels generate, is generated like this. And this, with neovascularization, we call it wet type. And without neovascularization, we call dry type. And in Japan, wet type is the dominant form. Compared to the United States or Europe, uh, the dry type is the, uh, nine times more than wet type in Europe and US. But in Japan, wet type is the dominant. So our target is wet type age-related macular degeneration. And there's a very good uh, 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 treatment for this neovascularization called anti-VEGF drug. This is an injection into the eyeball, and it's a very expensive uh, drug. But this can resolve the neovascularization very quickly. But this is not the radical treatment, because the cause is senescence of the RPE. So uh, usually the neovascularization recur. recur. Uh, uh, patients has often recurrence, even though they have many time injection into the eyeball. So I think the radical treatment is RPE transplantation, replacement of the old RPE. And that is also in the dry type and also the wet type. So oh, this is the symptom of the age-related macular degeneration. You can see the tortured shape here and the black scotoma here. And as I said, People cannot see very clearly around the mac outside of the macula, so oh, you can see the uh, peripheral part. So you can walk or uh, eat as as normal, but you cannot read anything around here. So this is very stressful disease for the elderly, and there are many many patients who suffers from this disease. In Japan, we have mainly the wet type, so that even though they have four, fourth or third uh, cause of the visual impairment. Compared to this, in US and Europe, age-related macular degeneration is the main cause of the uh, visual impairment in the elderly. And in, in here, the 90% nine, of them are dry type that has no treatment at all now. So retinal pigment epithelial treatment is the only e hopeful treatment for the dry type MD especially, and also the uh, wet type MD. So the strategy of the surgery is like this. 
this is retina, and this is retinal pigment epithelial cells. And people have this neovascular membrane. So we will uh, place a little bit hole, uh, a little, very small hole in the retina and pull out the, this uh, damaged tissue from here. And then the uh, RPE cannot replace by themselves in this large lesion. So we will put the uh, IPS-derived patient's own young RPE cell sheet here. So this is the uh, cell sheet uh, made from the IPS cells. It's amazing. We, we took the uh, skin fibroblast, skin cells from the patients, and cultured them for 10 months. And they gradually grown these brown retinal cells. So we could really make the skin cells into the retinal cells. That's amazing. And the um, RPE transplantation itself was done. We have many uh, clinical uh, experience about the wet type AMD RP transplantation. In early 1990s, uh, embryonic RPE was transplanted to the uh, wet type AMD. But it was rejected because it was allogeneic, other person's cells. And in 2000, um, uh, autologous RPE that harvested from the peripheral part of the retina was injected into the uh, center part, macula. But uh, it has low survival ratio. So recently, the European group did the auto retinal pigment epithelial sheet cut out from the peripheral part uh, was moved to the central part. And it has uh, uh, some extent they have a good results. And they reported 133 cases after seven years. And they show, or sometimes they show, this is the transplanted uh, autologous RP cell sheet that was moved from the peripheral part. And you can see this, these figures are uh, sensitivity of the retina. So he, this patient can see only on the transplanted cell sheet. And this shows zero, means he cannot see in this area. So oh, the transplanted RPE can restore the visual function here. But this is the peripheral uh, autologous cell sheet. And this surgery is good for some extent, but it has uh, severe risk. When you cut out the peripheral RPE, they may be a massive hemorrhage or total retinal detachment. So this is a very risky uh, surgery, and no Japanese patient, um, surgeon did, the, did this. So if we could prepare the uh, RPE cell sheet outside of the eyeball, that might be the safer treatment. So. The beginning of this project was Dr. Sasai's uh, uh, method. He once, he's a classmate of mine, and he once told me that he did, he tried to make uh, uh, brain cells, brain neural cells from the ES cells, uh, primate ES cells. And he showed me this dish. Please look into these brown cells. I tried to make the brain tissue, but uh, we got these brown cells. So this might be a retinal uh, pigment epithelial cells. So uh, I was an ophthalmologist, so he asked me. And I evaluate these cells, and I convinced that this is a perfect retinal pigment epithelial cells. So oh, immediately I learned that this can be used for the treatment of this big, huge, problematic uh, disease. So since then, I pursue the uh, clinical, subclinical, uh, preclinical research. And uh, we reported that uh, primate ES cells can be used for the treatment in 2004. That was the first report of uh, usage of the primate ES cells for any kind of diseases. So, but from now, from here, we should do many things because uh, ES cells have the 
uh, uh, ESL is made from the uh, fertilized egg, so it's other person's cells. So if we transplant the uh, ESL derived renal cells, uh, that will have immune rejection. So uh, we hesitated to use these ES cells. But since uh, 2006, uh, the iPS cells came. So oh, I, I thought this iPS cell solved the last hurdle of the uh, retinal pigment epithelial cell transplantation. And since 2007, the generation of method of the iPS cells become very safe now. We don't use uh, CMIC. The, this is oncogene, but we didn't. We are not using CMIC anymore, and we, and we don't use retrovirus anymore. And safer method is developed already. And the uh, requirements for the replacement therapy, we need the uh, quality, of course, of the cells, and the quantity, and consistency, and the safety. So we evaluated these. And today, I, I won't go in detail. Please ask me if you are interested. But uh, as far as we e e evaluated, the iPS cell-derived retinal pigment epithelial cells have the uh, perfect function as a uh, retinal pigment epithelial cells. And also, they can behave like a na na naive RP cells where we put into the rat's eye and they rescue the photoreceptor cells. In these rats, the RP is, um, cannot function and the photoreceptor uh, gradually degenerate and disappear. But if we uh, transplant the iPS cell-derived retinal pigment epithelial cells, they rescue the photoreceptor cell like this compared to the uh, control. So, Oh, and the main uh, important issue about the iPS cell is the tumorigenicity, the safety. So we test and test many times. Actually, more than four series of the tumorigenicity test. And we've never had any tumors from the purified RPE cells. And so the, uh, the reason why the RPE was the first one, it's very reasonable because this cell has the very uh, peculiar characteristics. Uh, we could get the mature cells, and we can purify them by color. And also, we need only a small amount of cells, so we can check uh, most of the cells. And this cell secrete the uh, growth factor called pigment epithelial-derived factor. This has the strong anti-tumor factor. So if we e culture the cancer cells or iPS cells with these RPE cells, this cell destroy, kill the uh, proliferating cell. So uh, with this, um, the tumor is um, uh, hard to uh, grow. And also, after the transplantation, we can see the retina very precisely, so we can detect the small amount of proliferation of the donor cells. So I think these are the very uh, safe condition. So after these preclinical tests, we proceeded to the clinical research track. In Japan, we have two tracks for the application of these new things. One is clinical research under the medical pra practitioner's law, Ishiho, and others are clinical trial after the, uh, under the pharmaceutical affairs law. But three years ago, the pharmaceutical law was not completely appropriate for the cell therapy because it's only for the small molecule drugs. So we cho chose this clinical research. This is a very unique system in Japan. And the actual clinical tr uh, research is like this. We took the uh, fibroblast from skin, patient skin, and made the uh, iPS cells many lines, many types of iPS cells. And we chose the very good ones and make the uh, RPE cells and purify them and make the uh, sheet uh, from this and put them back to their own patient. 
And the outline of clinical study, they should have its native uh, wet type AMD, and the best vis corrected visual acuity should be less than 2060. And the important thing is that patients should have uh, treated with uh, uh, current therapy. And the first patient uh, in her 70s was treated uh, 18 times injection into both eyes. So she decided mainly because she would like to stop the injection into the eyeball. And uh, this is the cell processing facility that we actually made the cells. And as you can see, people should wear these very stressful um, wearing, and they, sh they, are, they are checked every movement. So it's a very stressful environment for them. And they did very well uh, for 10 months, more than 10 months. And they made a very beautiful cells in here. And during the procedure, we checked every step of the safety of the cells. For example, the vector remnant check is done by uh, qPCR. And also, we checked the uh, karyotype or uh, gene mutations and the copy number variation of the genes. And then uh, we checked the LIN28. This is a, a immature cell marker by QPCL. And uh, uh, finally, we checked all the functions of the RP cells before the transplantation. And all those checking, we got a very good results. And one out of six lines has the uh, plasmid remnant uh, in the genome. So, of course, we, we didn't use this positive one. And this is the actual um, sheet. We also developed this device to inject the sheet in beneath the retina. And this is, this is a, a rabbit's surgery. This is the uh, retina, re rabbit's retina, and we made the uh, bleb, the dome of the water, into the retina, and then cut the uh, cut the retina with scissors, small scissors. One point seven millimeter wide incision into the retina, and this is pupil. So uh, we can see through the uh, pupil. And beneath the retina uh, from this incision, we uh, inject the uh, retinal sheet. So this is the same method we used for the patients. Yes. Okay. And this is the actual surgery. And the surgeon did this. Uh, to the patient, and alongside the uh, one doctor it was preparing the cell sheet, and not to make them dry. That was tough, he said. And uh, um, so the uh, most difficult part of the surgery was the removal of the damaged <coughs> tissue. So sometimes it caused the massive hemorrhage or breakdown of the retina. So we were very excited when the damaged tissue was um, removed safely. And the uh, cell sheet was replaced just in the middle of the uh, macula. So that was very successful, I, I thought. And the uh, patient told us that uh, she, can, she, could, she can see uh, brighter the next day, but it's because of the removal of the damaged tissue, not by the iPS cells. So we should wait for six months or even 12 months if the IPS cell works or not. But in regenerative medicine, the effect is determined by the host environment, not by the cells. For example, even in the uh, same wet type AMD, there are various stages. If patient has only the neovascularization, the current treatment can cure the disease. 
But once the RPE is damaged, RPE re replacement is needed. And then the photoreceptor cells above was damaged. Uh, only RPE transplantation cannot uh, cure those patients, the severe ones. So in that case, we need the photoreceptor transplantation. That is very uh, challenging, but we are doing the uh, uh, preclinical uh, research about the photoreceptor transplantation. And the, uh, maybe the imagine, we are imagining that, the ima imagine the uh, effect of the, this treatment. And for example, the, for the wet type AMD, patients can see the ideal, or patients expect this clear vision, but the uh, reality is not. We can only be <coughs> a little bit uh, improvement of the visual acuity. And in this case, patients cannot read only this regenerative medicine. That's the point. So the effect of the regenerative medicine gradually improves. And I'm sure uh, that it will be a great uh, treatment within 20 years, I should say. But until then, the cost is enormous and the effect is small. So we should go through this stage safely here. That's the problem. For this, we are planning the uh, allogeneic transplantation of the iPS-derived retinal cells. And for this, the, uh, Dr. Yamanaka is preparing the iPS cell bank or iPS cell stock that, that matches the uh, cell type Mm, cell type matches to many e people in Japan. For example, if Dr. Yamanaka is now preparing one iPS cell, and that will, that can be used for 10% of the Japanese people without any e immunosuppression. So that is very e realistic uh, about the allogenic transplantation. And with this cell line, I think the cost should can be reduced one tenth or one uh, more than one tenth, maybe hundreds, one hundred. Oh. So oh, that might be the standard treatment within ten years or so. And also, the situation in Japan has been changed dramatically. The uh, Ministry of Health changed the law about the regenerative medicine, the pharmaceutical law, and they made a new chapter only for the regenerative medicine and the gene therapy. And that will accept the uh, uh, com 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 um, adaptive licensing with com com condition. But, uh, so this means we don't need any phase three. That's a, a revolutionary change. And if we can confirm the uh, safety and the probable benefit with a good science, uh, we can, uh, company can um, sell the cells. But this law is very challenging and in a sense very dangerous because without any clue of the effectiveness, company can sell the cells. But this law is, will be e e accomplished with the help of the academia society. That is very unique. Because ministry and people oh, maybe rely on the academia society and uh, re rely on the control by medical academia. And this law is com accompanied with the registration system after the approval. And the re registration is, will be controlled by the academic society. So our, uh, for example, ophthalmology society will choose or restrict the institutes that can be do the uh, regenerative medicine. So this is very unique law, I think. And for the photoreceptor transplantation, uh, again, the Dr. Sasai's method is uh, living here. And he made a three-dimensional culture system of the retinal cells from the ES cells. And we utilize this if we, e transplant this retinal cell sheet beneath the retina, mouse retina here. And 
they can connect to the uh, secondary neuron. They made synapse and uh, uh, react to the uh, light. This transplanted photoreceptor cell can survive more than six months. So well, we are preparing the uh, preclinical data and uh, within five years, I'd like to do the clinical research using the photoreceptor cell. But again, the effect might be very small. The uh, Regnitis pigmentosa photoreceptor degenerative disease patients can see nothing in the severe case. But with the photoreceptor transplantation, after hundreds of years of research, he can see like this. Maybe a big shape can be seen. Or the uh, constricted visual field can be expand it a little bit. So this is the realistic retinal regeneration. But uh, during the uh, early uh, period, we will, maybe we will need the, uh, not only the regenerative medicine, but the uh, low vision care, the rehabilitation of the uh, visually impairment person is very, will be very important to make the regenerative medicine successful. And now we are planning the uh, medical center that can be a, a re regenerative medicine can be combined with the rehabilitation or low vision care. And so that is my e e interest now. The, uh, I'd like to make the new medical system that is suitable for the regenerative medicine and the ministry and the law will support us very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, thank you, Dr. Takahashi. We'll move right into Q&A. We'll start with uh, questions from the working press. Uh, Anthony, Anthony has his hand up first. <clears throat> Please um, come to the mic, give your name and affiliation, and uh, try to keep questions brief and to the point. Anthony Rowley, Singapore Business Times. Um, I will keep my question brief, but I would like to say that I, I have the highest regard for the Japanese ophthalmic profession because I had a very unsuccessful cataract operation many years ago which appeared to damage the retina. And I had remedial surgery here which has made my right eye virtually perfect again, so I'm no, full of respect. Um, I have a colleague actually in, uh, from, former, from, falling from Singapore who's living in um, uh, New Zealand now and he suffers from retinitis pigmentosa. Mm -hmm. And I would, I, I, your lecture was very interesting, rather technical. I didn't quite understand at the end whether you were saying that there is progress in retinitis pigmentosa or not, and whether in the future it will be possible to mm. treat that disease. Yes, the retinitis pigmentosa is a very tough disease, and uh, uh, there's no treatment at all now. And they need the photoreceptor cell. That is hard, more difficult, because that's, uh, uh, photoreceptors are neurons compared to the retinal pigment epithelial cells, that's uh, epithelium. So we need a synapse formation after transplantation. But we have succeeded to observe the uh, synapse formation with the transplanted cells with host. So uh, we are preparing the uh, five years later, uh, the clinical research or clinical trial of the uh, photoreceptor cell transplantation to the retinitis pigmentosa. Okay, next question. I love how researchers talk about what they're going to be doing in five years. I, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing in the next five minutes. Rick? I'm Rick Weisberg with ELSS. Dr. Takahashi, thank you for a very exciting presentation. You have so many amazing technological advances in your work on many fronts. So, and I'm interested in all of those, but I was um, perhaps most intrigued by the new uh, approval system mm -hmm. for advanced regenerative medicine technologies. 
And I'm, I'm a little concerned that uh, academic societies uh, dealing with approval in their own specialty may have some vested interests and some biases that they might not even be aware of. Mm -hmm. So what kind of safeguards are built into the system or do you think would be appropriate Mm, to assure that there's an uh, unbiased uh, evaluation of the performance of, of new therapies. Mm, that's very important and difficult. And you mean that the bias from the investment of, to the company or something? Not well, it's kind of um, difficult to pin down, but there are many kinds of indirect uh, mm -hmm. benefits to the profession that might arise from having a research program proceed mm -hmm. versus saying that there's some problem that should cause this to be to no longer be experimented with on people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So, from now, oh, we should uh, uh, strictly build the uh, system of the uh, watch what's happening after the approval. And I only can say that. Mm. So, we start talking in our ophthalmology society uh, which institute should be uh, included and what kind of data we will collect from the, we will register all the cases after the approval. So, uh, and people in Japan, still people rely on the academia society. Is there a case that has been uh, submitted for approval under this new system? Yes, actually one case is um, applied applied, I, I heard. And now there are many e discussion or uh, application to the uh, PMDA, the regulatory authority in Japan, from the foreign companies. So many, e many uh, company who is planning the regenerative medicine is very interested in, the, in this system, I heard. Further questions? Reporters with no questions? <laughs> if the reporters have no questions, we'll take questions from the uh, general audience. Okay, of course. He says, would stem cells replace the need for gene therapy of the, ge of the gene mutation that caused the eye disease in the first place? And um, would stem cells need to be used in conjunction with gene therapy for better results? Yeah, yeah right, right. For example, the retinitis pigmentosa is caused by the gene mutation. One gene mutation causes the retinitis pigmentosa. And if we use the uh, patient's own cells, that has the that gene mutation, so we cannot use the uh, patient's own cells. In that case, the one way is using the other people's cells, allogeneic transplantation. And one other, another way is that uh, correct the gene mutation with the gene therapy outside of the body uh, during the iPS cells, and then make the renal cells and put back to the uh, to the patients but but for now the cost cost and the uh, safety is the issue about the ex vivo gene therapy such kind of treatment but i think in the future maybe 20 years later uh, people will have not 20 30 years People have, will have their own iPS cells and correct the genes and put them back to their own body. I hope your friend can hang on for another 30 years, Anthony. <laughs> Further questions? Yes, Fujita san. Uh, my name is Fujita, and I'm with the Kokumin Shimbun, found, uh, founded by Tokutomi Soho. <laughs> in 1890. The reader of my newspaper is all proud of you because you know, our readers are proud of Japan. But um, my question is, uh, how can the media help you to further you know, uh, realize mm -hmm. your uh, goals? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, one more additional question is, you know, how, you f how you feel? You, know, you achieved such a remarkable achievement mm -hmm. as a human person. 
not man or woman, mm-hmm. but uh, what, what's your honest feeling for attaining that kind of a, mm-hmm. you know, achievement of the human race? Thank you, thank you very much. And the first question is that uh, I, I made a many discussion or we had many meetings uh, every several months with the mass media journalists. Mm-hmm. And because 10 years ago, I was embarrassed because the uh, uh, um, in the newspaper they uh, treat our project as uh, uh, more than m- very remarkable, more than the reality, and the patients um, uh, expect too much. So after that, we uh, did this meeting every several months, and after this first clinical uh, trial. I think the in mass media in Japan treat us very calmly in the very um, good way. I was very satisfied with the uh, broadcasting or something like that. And if you could, I'd like to ask the mass media that please make the, um, in Japan, the risk is people doesn't accept the risk at all, the Japanese people. So that is a part because of the mass media. And uh, so if we would like to do the, this kind of advanced uh, medicine, people should take the risk. So even for now, there are many people that I can, we cannot proceed this treatment because there should be still some risk. So uh, in Japan, it's the most Mm -hmm. obstacle for us to proceed. So please make the, uh, please explain the risk benefit balance, not only the risk. Newspaper usually pick up the only the risk, not to compare to the benefit. So and my feeling now is just a start, as I said to many people that, because my goal is make the um, treatment as a standard one and treat the every, every most of the patients I see in the outpatient clinic. So still I can uh, treat only one, two, three people. That's not the goal at all. So this is just a start. Other questions? Oh, let me see if... Uh, other questions from anyone in the audience? Uh, yes, back there. Uh, thank you. Um, my name is Yuichi Nito with Nikkei Newspaper. Um, as, you, as you mentioned that uh, Japan has uh, uh, introduce a new system for, for regenerative uh, um, products uh, approval, and but still, uh, Japan has seen said that 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 there's a lot of countries more advanced in in making it into a industry level um, of products. Um, how do you think, uh, or how do you compare Japan with other countries in in terms of uh, making? Uh, uh, regenerative therapy as an industry or a system, social system. Uh, okay. So the, in Japan, the um, Japan was tend to uh, 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 not to uh, cover, c- cannot have the courage to advance, um, promote the advanced therapy or some new things. But with this law, I think this system is the most advanced one in the world now. So that's a very uh, rare occasion now. And, but the uh, hurdle is, as I said, the people's feeling to uh, resist to the new treatment or new things. So for now it's good that only the good aspect is broadcasted or uh, reported in the media, 
But after uh, uh, for a while, maybe the risk is more um, focused in Japan. So that's the that will be the problem, I think. Okay, further questions? Uh, yes, over here. Sakshima is my name, uh, I'm an associate member. Uh, I have a mi uh, mild or an early stage uh, glaucoma. Earlier in your presentation, uh, it was uh, apparently not the target of IPS. Uh, can it be uh, uh, treated in the near future? Or can I expect that that could be uh, fixed? Thank you. Yeah. Um, glaucoma is affect the, uh, affect the optic nerve that connect the eyeball to the brain. And that is the most difficult part to regenerate because the cell can be transplanted, but the uh, process should be go into the brain for a long distance. So I thought it's very difficult, but nowadays it's a hope. And we are thinking of um, start the research about the optic nerve regeneration because one report was uh, one report was there that the uh, uh, ganglion cell, the neuron, once the neuron is transplanted to the uh, certain kind of animal, P10 knockout mouse, that's a very special one. In that mice, the process goes to the brain and connect to the brain and recover the visual function. So after the report, many people think uh, about the optic nerve regeneration. But it will take more than 10 years from now. Yeah. Yeah. So please use the this, uh, installation. OK, right here. Eric Bonnard, freelance reporter from Germany. Uh, Dr. Takahashi, I was wondering if you are familiar with the research that's uh, being done replacing retina with uh, microelectronics. In other words, a chip yeah. functions yeah. as a, an artificial retina. And where do you see more hope coming for mm. people who have those kinds of uh, conditions? And mm. is there a way of combining the two capabilities to get ahead in research? I'm happy to answer that question because it's very important. And the artificial retina, the prosthesis, is already in the clinical scene. And the, of course, the, in Germany and the United States, many patients, tens of patients are received the tip, electrode tip in, beneath the retina, and they can see the shape after long time uh, blindness. So that's remarkable. So every patient came that who come to my outpatient clinic and they want to listen about the retinal transplantation, but I talk to them that retinal prosthesis is more realistic for your situation. So uh, I, uh, we follow the uh, uh, artificial retina after 10 years. So within 10 years, we cannot catch up to the prosthesis. But after 20 years, we will, <laughs> It will be more good, um, more good treatment, the transplantation. But the uh, target will be different. The artificial retina will cure more severe cases. And the retinal transplantation should be done more earlier phase because otherwise the host retina cannot accept, receive the uh, uh, cell project connection. So the target is, the stage is different from the prosthesis. OK. Uh, yes, right here. And once again, let's please keep questions brief and to the point. <laughs> uh, Mitsuya Goto, an old uh, associate member who is now a life member of this club and lifelong businessman. I uh, <clears throat> admire the work you are undertaking. And also, I admire the way you made your presentation. 
And I know you, a graduate of Kyoto University, have a PhD from Kyoto University. Uh, have, you, have you done any joint uh, research with U.S. institutions or a uh, European institution? Why are you so fluent in English? <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, not the actual uh, cooperation, but we have, I have m many friends in the foreign institute, and we discuss ab about the data we have, especially the Gage, Dr. Gage in the uh, Salk Institute in San Diego, and also the uh, Dr. Ali in London, University College of London, did a very good uh, uh, work about the photoreceptor transplantation. Milestone uh, work was done, so uh, we discussed many times. I should have mentioned in my introduction that uh, Dr. Takahashi worked with Dr. Gage at the Salk Institute in San Diego. Uh, how many years were you there? Two years, from 1995 to 1996. So. Mm -hmm. at, the, at that time, the neural stem cell was a very emerging concept. So no, I, I was sure no ophthalmologists encountered the concept. So <laughs> I thought I was the one who will make the treatment from yes. this. And I also, I also should have mentioned that she is a clinician uh, as well as a researcher. So she sees patients and conducts research. Anthony, we'll come back. Several times today you've said after 10 years or after 20 years, but why? Why so long? I mean, for example, if more funds were available for research, would that accelerate the process or is there something that prevents that happening? And is it also to do with the fact that this is mainly a disease of older people and therefore the, the focus is not so much strongly on it as it would be? in fact with the younger people and finally since Japan does have a rapidly aging population mm -hmm. is this likely to receive far more attention in Japan <laughs> than in other countries? Uh, the, about the fund, yes in some extent, extent but I'm saying 10 years um, thinking about the progress of other fields of science so it needs time. For example uh, I was researching ES cells but I, I should wait until the IBS emerge w to make the treatment without any immunosuppression. So that will take time. And actually, I was funded very much <laughs> about this project. So I, I don't think, I, I think um, appropriate amount of money should be should required, but not, too much money is uh, not uh, needed. And I'd like to do many other things uh, instead of doing only the IPS cells. And also, the, um, uh, as the second one is elder person. Mm. Yes, but I, I work with uh, uh, patient society for a long time, 10 years or so, and people, 10 years ago, the patient society people only think about their problem. But nowadays, uh, people, oh, the conscious is, has been changed, and the, they think about the disease or the next generation. and. Um, Nowadays, uh, people uh, support and help us very much, even though it's not his treatment. And so far, it will take more than 10 years to become a standard treatment, so I cannot do anything. I think actually, given that IPS cells were only discovered in 2005 or 2006, mm -hmm. This move from from the laboratory bench to the bedside, mm -hmm. as we say, was fairly quick in this case. Is that right? Yes, yes. That is because I was did I did the ES cells, so 
uh, I was almost there. We did the preclinical uh, study using ES cells. So we've just replaced the IBS cells. So we did not start from the basic research, but suddenly the uh, preclinical stage has begun with IBS cells. So it took only five years. Rick? Thank you again. So the, I guess one of the critical stages of the healing process for restoring function mm -hmm. is for the transplanted tissue to reconnect in a functional way with the surrounding tissues. Mm -hmm. For example, the uh, color receptors have to connect to the implanted uh, retinal membrane so, or epithelial layer. Can you, is that well understood how that process happens and is there active research investigating oh. how it proceeds? Uh, not thoroughly, and uh, we don't know the mechanism yet. Partially we know, but we don't know how, for example, photoreceptor cells can make the outer segment and make the peculiar shape or connect to the secondary neurons. But as a fact, we transplant them and we did get the synapse connection. So. The, to think about the clinical, it's okay to un, not to understand the whole mechanism of the uh, process, I think. And so far, it, it, it goes very well. Other questions? I would, uh, okay, for just a second. Maybe not a good question. Oh, no, we only allow good questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, this is a very important um, window to the world, foreign correspondence. Um, do you have any, if, if you have, do you have any comments to Sasai Sensei? Comment to the Sasai mm -hmm. Sensei. Mm -hmm. Because you are giving a speech here. Yes. You know, the, the famous mm -hmm. foreign correspondence. Yes. Sasai Sensei is uh, like a father of the regenerative medicine, especially the nervous system in Japan and also in the world. And um, really, he made the start of this project. Even though we changed all the process, the culture process uh, for the clinical use, but uh, still, he's the father of this project, I think. I would like to ask about the, uh, the process of growing mm -hmm. the replacement cells. You said it took 10 months. Uh, yes. And the, the size of the tissue is, is really tiny. Yes. It was yes. How many? 1.3 by 3 millimeter. <laughs> right. And it took 10 months. Mm -hmm. Is growing the replacement tissue going to be one of the bottlenecks mm -hmm. in applying mm -hmm. IPS cells and ES cells? Not the proliferation is the matter but the uh, differentiation, the growing of the cells is the issue. And during the 10 months, four months is needed for the IPS cell generation. And three months is needed for the uh, uh, making the RPE cells, like in, in from embryo to make the, it need, needs three months to make the embryo now cell to the mature for, RP cells, and then make them sheet for two months or so. So not the uh, number of the cell is the matter, but the growth of the cells needs the time. Change, change the cells. Mm -hmm. Because it takes 10 months to become baby in the... Yes. <laughs> in the belly, so. But is, is this, is that process going to be a bottleneck in yes. terms of applying this in technology to other? Cost. And so the uh, direct reprogramming is now focused uh, by many researchers to shorten the period and make the cost reduced from, f without go through the IPS cells, but the, from the fibroblast 
directly to the retinal cells, that will take only two or three months. So that will reduce the cost for the allogenic um, autologous transplantation. Any, any other questions? Yes, Eric. Thank you again for taking my question. You mentioned that um, your experience with uh, ES type stem cells has helped you to accelerate your, your work that came after mm -hmm. IPS was discovered. Um, do you think that uh, that, that might be a, a bottleneck in the, the overall field of that research, that not enough uh, people are there who have that, have mm -hmm. had that experience? Or would you say that uh, you're also an opth ophthalmologist, uh, that uh, having expertise in a certain field or with a certain condition in patients help, helps more to do that kind of research? Yes, that's a good po point. And in Japan, the uh, restriction of the research using ES cell was the bottleneck for, for a certain period. And so not many people are familiar with the ES culture, ES cell culture, so that was a, a little bit hurdle in Japan. But most hurdle to make the treatment from the basic research is, as you said, the people who knows the goal are not researching very much. And the basic researchers, um, the researchers done by the basic researcher has small vector, vector to the uh, goal. So that's the, uh, uh, if you would like to speed up the people who knows the goal should be included in the group, especially in Japan, I think. Okay, if there are no further questions, we'll, we'll draw this to a close, and uh, I would like to take this opportunity to give Dr. Takahashi a one-year honorary membership in the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. Uh, please, please come back and join us again. Yeah, and thank you all for coming.